Hey Food World, I'm Chef Paul with Cooking Skills Academy, here with my friends from Apt at the Design First Studios, and tonight we're gonna show you how to cook a great meal on the Decor Induction Cooktop, as well as in the Decor Convection Oven. And today what we're gonna make is a wonderful rosemary garlic chicken. We're also going to make a garlic mashed double baked potato. We're going to make Brussels sprouts that are caramelized in onions and finished with honey and a balsamic glaze. And then last, we're gonna finish it off with an apple pie that's made with a homemade streusel and a sweet sugar glaze. So first thing I'm gonna do is actually start with the potatoes. We're gonna take our potatoes and whole garlic cloves. So it's real simple, just three or four potatoes. You know, figure one potato per person, that's all you need. And then whole garlic cloves, actually restaurant secret, Chefs like to buy their garlic already peeled. So you can go to the grocery store, buy peeled garlic already. All we're gonna do with that is throw it in our water, okay? And our water here, we're gonna bring to a boil. So we're just gonna turn this up. One thing I love about the decor induction cooktop is the boost option. All you have to do is turn your cooktop to high, hit the plus sign one more time, and it gives your water a boost of energy. It's gonna come to a boil. And then we have our potatoes, and we're just gonna slice these down. The key thing with the potatoes is make sure that all the potatoes are sliced into even sizes so that they all cook evenly. If they are different sizes, then what happens is you might have a potato that's done and the big pieces are not done, and then you'll get some mushy potatoes and other pieces of the potato that are still hard when you're cooking them. So all we're gonna do is throw these in the water and we're gonna let those cook for about 10 minutes. We'll know they're done when they're fork tender. Now we're gonna work on the Brussels sprouts, which are absolutely just delicious. Brussels sprouts tend to be a little bitter, so what we're gonna do is contrast them with a little bit of sweet honey. So what I'm gonna do here is take some garlic, again, fresh garlic. We're gonna take maybe three or four cloves here, and then I have some Brussels sprouts. These are real large, they're nice. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna quarter these. So we're gonna quarter these. Sometimes in the bottom of a Brussels sprout, there's a little knob, you just wanna pull it off, toss it, you don't need that. And then all I'm gonna do here is quarter my Brussels sprouts. Next, we're gonna take one onion and we're gonna slice it up. Now, there's a lot of tricks and tips to how to dice a tear-free onion. The real secret is make sure you have a super sharp knife. If you have a dull knife, you're gonna crush the onion, the turpins in the onion actually what's causing you to cry, the sulfur. So you wanna make sure you have a really sharp knife and slice through the onion. So all I'm gonna do here is slice uh, about quarter inch juliennes. That's all you need here. The end pieces you can keep, you can save it to make stock. If you're not that ambitious, then just toss them out in the garbage, you don't need them. So the key when slicing an onion is make sure you slice with the knife. Don't press with the knife, slice with the knife. Your knife is designed to slice. If you crush the knife, if you crush the onion, I'm sorry, it's gonna actually cause you to cry. Next, we're gonna take our Brussels sprouts and we're gonna take the Brussels sprouts and onions and put them in the bowl. And we're gonna finish this off with a little bit of lemon juice and just a touch of lemon zest. Uh, lemon zest is great because it gives it a little bit of color, some contrast there, and then also just a little bit more of the sweetness from the oils that are actually in the lemon itself. So all you wanna do is slice off the top here on both sides. And then with a sharp knife, just sneak underneath the skin just so you get a little bit of that skin, just like this. Take the skin, and then I'm gonna slice this lemon in half. We're only gonna use about half of the lemon because it's uh, pretty large. So we squeeze that juice in there, just like that. We're actually gonna bake the lemon in with this as well, so save that. And then my zest, all I'm gonna do is julienne that. I'm just gonna slice that up into little pieces. And with these little pieces, we'll add this to the bowl. We'll add a little bit of salt and pepper. Give that a quick little toss. And then we'll throw this in at the same time with the chicken. So next we're gonna work on our rosemary garlic chicken. Now, cooking chicken or any protein is okay doing it traditionally on a stove top or whatnot, but cooking on an induction makes it really simple. The reason being is because with induction, you get even cooking. Uh, you can control the temperature and it comes to temperature very fast. So what I'm gonna do first is actually make our marinade for our chicken. Real simple again, fresh garlic, a fresh sprig of rosemary. And we're gonna just gonna start with a, a real quick chop of this. So with rosemary, all you have to do is pull it off the stem here. And we're gonna take our garlic and we're going to chop it up. 
And the best way to chop up the garlic is actually take your garlic and bring it to the bottom of the board. I'm gonna place my knife on top of the garlic, then I'm just gonna smash it with my hand. It's gonna make a nice flat piece of garlic, and then you just chop it up. And then what I'm gonna do is take my rosemary, and I'm gonna chop up my rosemary with this as well. Be careful, because the rosemary tends to jump all over the place. So if you wanna keep it from jumping all over the place, then just add it in with your garlic, and you can chop those together. I'm gonna take my garlic and my rosemary, we're gonna throw that in there, and then we're just gonna toss this around. So next I'm gonna take my chicken, I'm gonna marinate it real quick so that I don't create any cross-contamination. I have my chicken here, and this is completely dry. That's another secret to cooking great meat. Make sure it's really dry, because if you put a wet piece of meat into a hot pan, you're gonna end up steaming your meat from all the extra liquid. So make sure your piece of meat is nice and dry. And then we're just gonna to toss this around to make sure everything is evenly coated. So toss your garlic, your rosemary, everything here is evenly marinated. And then, right before you cook it, add salt and pepper. You never wanna add salt and pepper too early because salt naturally brings out the moisture, so you might actually dry out your meat. So always season your meat right before you cook it. Next, what I'm gonna do is take my chicken that's actually close to room temperature. Here's the secret for searing. Never cook a cold piece of meat. Make sure your meat is room temperature. What I'm saying is don't leave your chicken out for four days. I'm saying take it out maybe half an hour before you start cooking it so the heat, the temperature, can move to the middle of it much faster and your piece of chicken stays juicier. So here's the secret of the induction. This pan here is cold. Right, cold cooktop, cold pan. Now I'm gonna take some olive oil, coat just the bottom of the pan. So now what I'm gonna do is turn my heat on. We're gonna turn this on to high. I'm gonna heat my oil up until it barely smokes. You don't wanna burn your oil, so don't let it burn too long, just until it barely smokes. And then I'm gonna take my chicken, I'm gonna place it in the pan, and I'm gonna make sure that I place this chicken in my pan away from myself so that the oil doesn't splatter back onto me. And you're gonna place all pieces of chicken in there and don't move them around. You wanna leave them in their place. If you move them around, then the chicken's gonna actually stick. And then what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take this once it's seared and we're gonna flip it over. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna finish this in the oven. We're gonna finish our Brussels sprouts first. We're gonna take our Brussels sprouts that we mixed up earlier and we're gonna put these in our baking dish here with our lemon. That's gonna be our garnish at the end. And we're just gonna spread these out evenly. Make sure they're not in a big pile, because then all they'll end up doing is steaming. You actually wanna make sure they roast. So one nice even layer in the pan, then I'm gonna throw this in the oven real quick. So we're gonna warm up our heavy cream we're gonna bring it to a slight simmer. You wanna add hot cream to hot potatoes for our double bake mash. You never wanna add cold cream to hot potatoes because you cool them down. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna heat up our cream. And the great thing about this too, again, is that boost. We're gonna add our cream to the pot. We're gonna turn our pot on high and add the boost. In a couple moments here, you'll see this heat up. While that's heating up, I'm actually gonna start slicing my green onions. So I'm gonna take my green onions and we're gonna begin slicing them. And the onions, the key thing here again, is make sure that your knife is super sharp and you're gonna slice through the onion in a rocking motion. And once your onions are sliced, by the time you're done, our heavy cream, by the magic of decor induction cooking, is already steaming. Now let's take our potatoes out of the pot here. We're just gonna use a strainer and make sure you grab all the garlic cloves that are in there too. That's actually where all of the flavor comes from. You added those whole garlic cloves in there, so it's basically like blanched garlic. And you know your potatoes are done when they're fork tender. You don't want them to be too soft or else they'll end up mealy, but you definitely want them to be soft enough so if you put a fork in it and you slide it out, the fork comes right out. So we're gonna scoop out all the garlic, all the potatoes. Make sure you mix this when it's hot. You don't want these to cool down to room temperature because if they do, your potatoes are gonna get a little hard. So we're gonna add some heavy cream here. So we have our heavy cream to this bowl and then some butter. So we have some dollops of butter here. Again, you know what, if you like butter, add a lot of butter. It's completely up to you. I like a lot of butter. And then a pinch of salt and pepper. And all we're gonna do is mash this together with our tongs. You can get a fancy potato masher if you want to, but again, remember these are double baked mashed potatoes, so they don't have to be perfect. You do want a little bit of meatiness in this, so we're just gonna mash them up until they're well combined. And then we're gonna add our green onions to it. And then we're gonna put this right back in the same pot that we had our heavy cream heating up in. So we're gonna take our double smashed or mashed baked potato in here. All we're gonna do is finish this with some dollops of 
sour cream, and then Parmesan cheese. Now cheese, you can use any kind of cheese. I love Parmesan cheese because it has a little bit of bite and it's a little bit salty. So I love that in my potatoes. And if you want to use cheddar or Munster, whatever your favorite cheese is, go ahead and finish it off on top. All it's going to do is melt on top. It's going to add a little bit of extra flavor to it. So we take our Parmesan cheese, we're going to toss that right on top like that. Then we're going to throw this in the oven. Next, we're gonna start our baked apple pie. So what I'm gonna do is we are going to peel Granny Smith apples. So all you wanna do is peel maybe four or five apples for one pie. So to slice our apples, we're just gonna slice these right down the middle so it's in two a halves. And also so that they sit nice and flat. You don't want them rolling all over the place. Then you slice them in half again. And then I'm just gonna slice this on a little 45 degree angle just to get the core out. I'll do that on all four pieces. And after I get that little core out, then I'll slice these into thirds, and then you have perfect little slices. I'll continue slicing all these apples until all four apples are sliced, and then we're gonna take these apples, and we're gonna bring them and put them into a glass bowl. Now we have our apples ready to go. We're gonna add some sugar, nutmeg, and cinnamon, and then a little bit of brown sugar as well to this. We're gonna toss it all together. So we have our sugar, we have our nutmeg, And we have our cinnamon. And we also have some brown sugar. And lastly, flour. Now what we're gonna do is toss this together and put it into our baked pie shell. Now that we have everything mixed in here, we're gonna put it into our pie shell. And we're gonna make a streusel topping for this which is real simple. It's just basically room temperature butter. The butter could actually be closer to cold slash room temperature. You don't want it too soft because what we're gonna do is end up making some crumbles out of this. So now we have some flour and then we can also add just a touch of this brown sugar. And we're just gonna crumble this together with our spoon at first and then we'll finish this off with our hands and it's nice to do it with your hands because your hands are warm so it'll help melt the butter a little bit. Now we evenly distribute the streusel topping over the pie. Make sure that it is spread out into all the little nooks and crannies. Okay, now we're gonna bake this in our oven. And believe it or not, yes, we're gonna bake an apple pie and bacon at the same time. So I'm gonna put this in here, I'm gonna explain how we can do that in a minute. So we put our apple pie in. We're gonna put our bacon in right next to it. And the way this is possible is because Decor's mesh filter eliminates any odor transfer into any of the foods that it's cooking next to. So you can cook a raw pan of bacon next to fresh apple pie and your apple pie won't taste like bacon, which might disappoint a couple of you. So what I love about cooking in the Decor Pure Convection Oven is that I don't have to worry about rotating any of my food. I can leave it in there. I can cook my whole meal from dinner to dessert all in one. I can close it up and I can forget about it and dinner's ready. For more recipes just like this, visit us at app.com. And be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And until next time, we'll see you in the kitchen.